I went to three Stray Kids concerts. <laughs> to some people, that is absolutely nothing. They've gone to like 20 in a row, but this was a first time for me. And the rest of you may be thinking, three concerts from the same artist back to back? Why? And the reason why is because they are my favorite artists to see live. I had so many different friends who I know from so many different places who wanted to attend the concert and I could only attend with all of them if I went three separate days. So please join me in reliving the memories from these past three concerts while I walk my family's new dog, Samwise. You know what, when I watch what happens when I bring out the harness. Get dressed, get dressed. <laughs> the only way we can run a YouTube channel and take care of a new puppy is multitasking. <laughs> so this concert recap will include several sections to it. I will make sure to label each one in the description so you can skip to whatever section you are most curious about. And the first topic that I wanted to cover, oh, good potty, is not my dog pottying, but rather, come on, baby. The amazing stay community at Stray Kids concerts. Each concert I attended was so special because not only of the performances and the way Stray Kids changed them up, but also because of the people that I went with and because of the people who I met. Come on, Samwise. We're not crossing the street. Come on. I'm going to pick you up. Oh, okay. Oh. And I picked up my puppy because he's refusing to walk. A few minutes later. Starts in general seem to be the perfect place for people of all different ages and backgrounds to come together and enjoy something together. I had friends that I made at past Stray Kids concerts reach out to me and we started up a group chat together to help each other get tickets. I was able to reach out to old friends of mine, ones that I knew since preschool, since they got into K-pop recently and see if they wanted to go. Because of these concerts, I was able to meet one of my assistant editors in person for the very first time. And then when one of my friends scored me VIP tickets, I saw that as an excuse to invite another YouTuber, one that I knew Bing Chan and the rest of the Stray Kids watched their content. And I had an absolute blast enjoying the VIP experience with Dre. These concerts were just such a lovely bonding experience for friends both old and new. But the stays that I met at the concert were all so incredibly sweet. I hope that even if you attend a concert with a friend that you aren't afraid to talk to the stays next to you. And I think Bang Chan's talking about how Stay and Stray Kids is a huge family is so, so, so true. I was talking with some of the stays who I'd met at past concerts and who had become my actual friends and they said that they feel like out of all the concerts that they've been to, Stray Kids concerts have been the ones that they've made the most friends at. I don't know, might not be true, but it's been the same for me as well. During the first night as I was filming the concert, I noticed some arm movements off in the distance. And I don't think a lot of you guys know this about me, but I actually wanted to be an ASL interpreter before I decided to become a musician. I wanted to double major in both music and ASL. And of course, there's no like prestigious music school that also offers ASL or the other way around. So I had to choose one. Ended up choosing music. Um. Music conservatories tend to not have people attending them who know ASL. So I lost my fluency over the past five years. And so when I saw the ASL interpreter, I was so excited to share that with people who follow me on Twitter. And so I tweeted about it and the Heart of Hearing Stay who requested the interpreter saw my tweet and immediately I was like, I must ask her to lunch. <laughs> she accepted and she went to lunch with me and my friends the next day. And I know we're getting off topic. All the emotions, all the love that I had for ASL and the deaf community that I had back in high school came bubbling up and I did my best to sign. And I know it was really bad and my hands were shaking, but it was the happiest I'd been in such a long time because you know, it's like one of your old hobbies. Uh, 
is reignited the, the flame of love for that hobby. And so during that lunch, Hannah told me how difficult the process is requesting the venue to get an interpreter. And she told me about how many times the venues have absolutely screwed her over. Like she would purchase a VIP ticket to sit on the floor and they'd be like, uh-uh, you're way back there. That's the only place we can put the interpreter, way back there. And so her like $500 has gone absolutely down the drain. I don't want to speak any more about it because this is her and other hard of hearing stays stories. So please follow her on Twitter. She's notified me that she is down to share her story, down to share the process. So please follow her there if you're interested. So then after lunch, Hannah traveled with us back to the venue for the second night in LA and the concert was phenomenal, of course, but to both of our surprise, at the end of the concert... When I was searching concert videos from last night, I saw a video of ASL interpreters doing sign language. I remember sitting in the audience screaming, that's my video! and my friends next to me were screaming and the girls above us thought that I was the interpreter because I was screaming so much. I'm like, no, they're over there, they're over there. And then to bring it full circle, I had the absolute joy of meeting the ASL interpreter who was there working both nights at the Kia Forum and both nights at the Honda Forum. And I asked her if she wanted to record a message for Stray Kids and any stays watching the video. Here it is. We were so excited to be recognized by Stray Kids and just so thrilled that the performers like recognize what we do and how we can bring the music to life for our deaf guests. And they were all so excited. It was an amazing experience. And I thank you for posting the video to kind of capture that moment and, you know, have have that little moment to kind of educate and enlighten people about the experience for deaf guests at concerts. So it's just a really amazing experience and thank you. <laughs> And now to move on to the topic that most people are probably here for. Let's not, let's not bark. Come on, baby. Don't listen to what they're saying. Their words bounce off of you, yeah? Let's go, walk it off. Let's walk it off, good, good boy. What I thoroughly enjoy about Stray Kids concerts is not only the high quality of their performance, their live vocals, their energy that they give, the endurance that they have, but also the song order. To me, the choice of what song happens when is incredibly important to my concert experience and Stray Kids have nailed it every single time. There was a really nice energy flow from start to end. The beginning felt like an absolute sexy attack. <laughs> All their cute and innocent, as Bing Chan would put it, songs were first. And then slowly but surely, they lured us into the rock section.
part of the reason why this song order works so well is because of which songs they decide to perform a rearranged version of. And that's what we'll talk about now. I have to say, hands down, Domino was my favorite to perform live, not only because of the rock version, but also because of the amount of fun it looks like the members were having and because of how fun the choreo was. new arrangement had so many different elements to it like i think before in the original track they mostly featured a traditional flute but this time they added a very lyrical string instrument which i'm not sure what it's called but it was in unison with the flute part and it was so gorgeous up in the higher register just nice long melodies and i wish i could hear it a little bit more i don't know maybe it was where i was sitting but it felt like the basses were definitely turned up higher than the higher frequencies. So it was mostly the bass and the kick drum that I heard the most. My favorite part in Domino was definitely the breakbeat part where the original trap subdivisions were played as like the original track while the live drums had the larger, stronger beats. Then the guitar just went off. And when the band musicians have fun, the audience has fun. And since God's menu is in a different key than Domino, it was fun to hear um, the tonic drone go off right after Domino, right before they switched to God's menu, so. Stray Kids knows the starting note. It won't start off key or anything. Next, I'd like to talk about Victory Song. While Domino was my favorite to experience live, Victory Song was the one that surprised me the most. When it started, I was like, nah, this isn't Victory Song. And they completely changed up the instrumental for Victory Song. New beat, new chord progression, which transformed it into something completely different. And the reason why the color and vibe changed so drastically is because they made most of the song into the mode that we call Phrygian. And this is a mode that actually you guys have heard with God's Menu. And there's the flat two in Phrygian, which makes the notes hit a little bit more tense because the notes are closer together on the scale. So while the opening progression to the song is G, then G up the octave, E flat, D, G, which is G minor, the new arrangement plays G, G flat, G, G flat. I have no idea if I'm singing the right notes. And that change made everything feel so much more sinister. This wasn't just a typical victory song that you might play after a football game. This was a victory song after a war. When giant sacrifices were made. I just remember during victory song, just stopped all my bopping and stood really still, just listening as hard as I could to try and hear all the changes. My poor friends kept asking if I was okay because I would be dancing to a song and then I would suddenly stop and like squint at the stage just so I could make sure I was hearing things right. Yes, I was okay. I was just in analysis mode, okay? It's hard to, it's hard to hear everything while moving your body. I'm just be like completely still, 100% concentration on the notes you hear. And those, of course, weren't the only songs that were changed. Even District 9 was changed. I think they've done various arrangements of District 9 and past concert but this one instead of changing the beginning of district 9 they changed the end and i don't maybe they did that before i can't remember 
But it, this time, this time, they added major. <laughs> And that addition of the major note, we call this modal mixture, major modal mixture, made it feel like they made it out of their or District 9, right? Because that, that's the whole point. They're like, we're stuck in this District 9, but we're like, we made it out. Or I, I'll, I'll, I need to like reread the lyrics. <laughs> but you know, it, it just felt like they escaped and they were successful from whatever they were running from. Oh my God, the dog wants to go home. Oh my God, please, no, I don't want to run. No, no, puppy. <laughs> So many of my friends ask me, what's your favorite part of the concert? What's your favorite part of the concert? It's 100% Thunderous Domino God's Menu. 100%. But you get that new energy that the band brings. And which is why I feel like Stray Kids continue to outdo themselves. Because you're like, if you went to their first concert, you're probably thinking, how on earth are they going to outdo themselves with the second concert? Then you go to the second concert, you're like, wow, they really outdid themselves. What are they going to do to outdo themselves again? And here, they brought in the band. They had those rearranged versions. They had a perfect balance of songs performed with choreography and songs that allowed them to interact with the audience and even some of the songs that they had choreography to, they also interacted with the audience. Okay, now that we've broken down some of the amazing tracks, let's talk about what's the best seat to sit in at a Stray Kids concert. When I bought these three different seats, I thought to myself, there's going to be an obvious answer. There's gonna be a definite, this is the best seat to sit in for a Stray Kids concert, for any concert, but no. It really depends on what you're there for. Is it to see and interact with the boys up close? Then I'd probably suggest getting a P1, P2 on the side or VIP. Is it to sit down and enjoy the performance? Then I'd suggest maybe something further back, maybe even in the middle because I had a fantastic time when I saw Stray Kids for the first time. And I sat high in the balcony in New York and I was smack in the middle. And I remember absolutely losing my shit even though I was far away from them. Now, if you're considering VIP and if it's worth the money, yeah, it is. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but that was mainly because I got to see them once before and I could actually <laughs> sit down and let my <laughs> analytic musician self just take over. And then when I saw them up close VIP, I just lost my shit the entire time. I grooved, I danced. And as for the sound check, they run through roughly three songs. They walk around, read signs, say hi to people. It's really quick, but being let into the auditorium early was pretty fantastic. And none of the fans had run out of their freebies yet. So we got so many freebies, got to meet so many amazing people. Dre and I stayed in our seats right after sound check, all the way up into the concert. So we got to get to know the people sitting around us really well. Another thing about VIP, which I loved experiencing more than just sitting away, was that you're close enough to catch all the small details of them goofing off. Because when I was far away, just watching them as a whole or just watching the projected screen next to the stage, I missed every little dance goof detail that I only ever experienced after I went on Twitter to see what other stays uploaded who were in VIP. I captured so many fun moments that make my heart feel so full. And the biggest one being, of course, Felix recognizing Dre. <laughs> And I'm the kind of friend who thrives through her friends thriving. And so just seeing Felix, every single time Felix came over to our side of the stage, I saw his eyes just go like, like just take a really small glimpse at Dre. And Felix is Dre's bias. So he was so well fed that night. Some of you guys may be wondering. And I posted on Twitter saying that he did, but I went back through footage and when he came by to wave hello at us, I'm not sure he knew I was there. I think he was just being 
an absolutely lovely leader who when seeing a youtuber right in front of him dre wave at him and then the girl next to him suddenly take out her phone and start pointing at him he would just naturally point out both of us right because he's inclusive af <laughs> Which is 100% fine. The hair keeps changing. My hair keeps changing. I'm doing my best to get a brand down here, but uh, it's a bit difficult when you kind of just look like every single girl ever. <laughs> End of all story, I don't know whether Chan saw me, but I know he saw Dre and that, that made my night. Was it worth it seeing three Stray Kids concerts in a row? My back and arm muscles may say no, but my brain and my heart say yes. Because you can pay attention to different things each time. This recap has come to an end. Please comment any stories that you have from meeting stays at Stray Kids concerts, or if you have yet to attend one and who you hope to attend with. Say bye. Say, no, no, not to me. The mask is not only protection from COVID, but it's also protection from Bobby kisses.